Hi, you're watching West Bloomfield 911. I'm your host, Tim Shepard, and on behalf of Chief Michael Patton and Deputy Chief Kurt Lawson, as well as my brothers and sisters in blue, I'd like to welcome you to the show. Joining me today is Stephanie Zoltowski, Director of Special Needs at the Jewish Community Center of Metropolitan Detroit. Stephanie, thank you very much for taking the time to come over and talk about um, your job, what's going on at the JCC, and, um, you know, a lot of people don't know what the JCC is. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. Um, I want to talk about you in general to, to begin with. So what is your title and what do you do? So I'm the Director of Special Needs at the JCC of Metro Detroit, okay. um, which is located in West Bloomfield. And I work with kids um, all the way up to 26 years old for summer camps, okay. um, all individuals that have special needs, as well as we do year-round programming um, for, same thing, kids up to young adults, up through adulthood, um, to provide socialization opportunities and break camps during the academic school year. So we provide a lot of different resources and, and programs for kids and young adults with special needs. Well, that's wonderful. And how did you get involved in that particular area? I, I, I'd been involved with the special needs population since I was about 13 or 14 years old when I began volunteering with Special Olympics, okay. and I just fell in love with it. I loved everybody at the sports tournaments, and it just kind of followed me through my career. Mm -hmm. And um, I was doing ABA therapy, which is applied behavior analysis for kids that have autism. Okay. Um, I was doing that in Chicago before I moved back home a couple years ago, and this opportunity uh, came about, and it is a great combination of everything that I've done uh, since high school, through my military career, through my uh, academic experiences. So it's a really great combination. That's excellent. And as far as your military career, so you were in the military. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Okay. I have a, a long family history of um, family members being in the military, so okay. I thought it was a great opportunity to follow through. And so I enlisted in 2008, and I was stationed overseas for a couple of years okay. as a police officer and an investigator. And then I did my last two years in San Diego before uh, moving back to Michigan. Well, number one, let me thank you for your service to the country. I think that's amazing. Thank I know you. that um, when you meet people and you tell me you're in the military, most of the time people always say that. And um, it's sincere. We mean that. And, you know, I think that dedicating yourself to a higher cause, in this case, military. And I think it carries over into your personal life as well. And I say personal, but um, your citizen life, right? So, Absolutely. And that's maybe where the um, special needs comes in. Um, so obviously you're driven by uh, serving others. I am. I am. As far as your education, um, so I know you were in the military. You said you had a master's degree. Um, I also know that you have your doctorate degree. So I do. can you tell me a little bit about that? When I finished undergrad, I was originally going into criminal justice. So okay. my plan was to do law enforcement as my career, and it followed through into my military career. And I earned my master's degree in forensic psychology, okay. focusing on like the history of criminals and what kind of um, traits would lead up to criminal activity. Okay. Um, that followed through past my military um, career, and I earned my doctorate degree in okay. business psychology. Okay. And my original plan was to focus on how to improve productivity and sustainability within an organization okay. through the employees and the staff, because without good staff, your company will not be successful. So that's helpful carrying over to my current position, Okay, for sure. And, and how long have you, have you been at the JCC? I've been there over a year and a half. Okay. I uh, moved back from Chicago a okay. couple years ago and started this position right away, and it's been wonderful. Well, that's amazing. And, you know, I, I know that um, as far as the JCC, I'm familiar with the JCC, obviously. I, I, I work in this community, and um, I know that with special needs, I didn't even know there was a department in the JCC that um, worked with special needs. So can you tell me a little bit about that and what's going on there? Absolutely. Okay. I sort of had the same um, misunderstanding. I grew up in Farmington okay. and had passed by the JCC tons of times sure. growing up, but I had no reason to go, so I was unfamiliar with it. Okay. Uh, but the JCC in West Bloomfield actually has one of the largest special needs departments in the country okay. of JCCs. Um, so what we do is we have summer camps um, for kids all the way up to 26 years old, and we've got three different programs 
uh, that are most popular. And the most popular one this year is our uh, Young Adults Vocational Program, okay. which is called Young Adults All Together. Okay. Um, and that main focus is to provide vocational training and soft skills training. Okay. So 16 to 26 year olds will go to a job site a couple times a week oh, great. and develop some technical skills at different nonprofits throughout the Metro Detroit area. And okay. they also go on a couple educational fun field trips to incorporate the soft skills to practice socialization and, and appropriate interactions. That's great. So that's our most popular this year. That's awesome. So do the do you have to be part of the JCC in order to take advantage of this? What's what's the criteria to get involved with the special needs at the JCC? So you don't have to have a membership. Okay. Members do get a discount for ha having a membership at the facility. Okay. Um, and you also don't have to be Jewish, okay. which is a very common question that I get. Sure. Um, we have a lot of staff and members that are not Jewish. Okay. Um, I would say about 60% are of our participants in the special needs department are not Jewish. Okay. So it's definitely a misconception. So it's very uh, welcoming. Very absolutely, to, to absolutely. A we have population. right. We yeah. have a, a campers during the summer that are coming from Troy, okay. um, a long distance. There's a lot of other programs in the Metro Detroit area, but there's not a lot that are similar or can really compete with our, our programs. Okay. And as, as far as special needs, you know, I think that's a very vague term to a lot of people. Absolutely. Um, when we're talking about special needs, and we don't have to be very specific, but is this autism? What's some of the um, special needs that we're talking about here so people understand, that the viewers understand what the population is? So I would say the largest percentage of our campers do have autism okay. somewhere on the spectrum. Okay. And when you have um, a diagnosis of ASD, it often co-occurs with some other disorder okay. um, or mental health challenge. So it could be um, anxiety, panic disorder, it could be depression, ADHD. So it's a lot of times a combination of things. Okay. But the department doesn't just focus on ASD. Okay. Um, it could, when we're talking about special needs, we're talking about anything that may cause a person to need some kind of accommodation. Okay. They could be visually impaired. They could have a walker and just need a little bit more time. So it's really anything that needs some kind of modification for them to be successful in one of our programs. Well, that's great. I think it's a wonderful community service. Um, obviously, there's a cost involved with this, um, and I know you'd mentioned that, and we don't have to be specific on how much it costs, because that varies. I'm sure it changes from year to year and things like that, but there's a minimal charge that, I mean, you, you have to staff this. Um, you have to have a director. You have to have staff. Absolutely. Um, you said, it, so... Is the charge, what, I mean, how can we talk about the, the financial aspect of this? Um, do, does insurance cover this? Is there a way for people to, that maybe don't have the financial need to cover this? Is there a way, is there scholarships, anything like that? Absolutely. So yeah. the, the program is costly. We have okay. two four-week sessions throughout the summer. Okay. Um, but parents have said you, you get what you pay for. Sure. So yes, it is, yeah. it is expensive, but we do provide an amazing program, okay. and we have amazing staff each summer. And um, we do offer financial aid as well as have scholarships. Okay. So we definitely try to accommodate as many financial situations as we can. Okay. And uh, we expect to have nearly 100 campers this summer, which wow, is up about 15 campers from last year. So that's big awesome. Yeah. Big, big increase. Well, you know, I think it's, like I said, I think that it's, it's so beneficial. And I have, I, I have friends who have children who are special needs and specifically autistic. And I know that, um, you know, most people that can afford it, even if they can't, will do anything for their family and their kids. We all want our, our kids to be successful. And um, to have these resources and these opportunities are great. Um, I think the main thing is getting the, the information out. Is there a website um, that you are, that's related to this? Or how can people look up more information if they want to? Absolutely. We do have a, a dedicated special needs page on our JCC website, okay. which is jccdet.org. Okay. Um, we also have a camp website, which is camp.jccdet.org, that provides all of our summer camp program information, and there's a, a dedicated area for special needs as well. Okay. Um, and we do have a lot of um, flyers and brochures with all of our program details that I, you know, I send out on a regular basis to parents and teachers. Okay. Um, so let me ask you this. So I know we're talking about the camps, right? Absolutely. What about the rest of the year? Are there things that go on? Is that primarily you preparing for the camps? What goes on at the JCC in terms of um, the special needs environment? 
I will say that we do spend a large majority of the year planning for sure. summer camp because okay. it is such an involved um, program. Okay. But during the school year, we offer break camps during the academic breaks. So the you know Christmas time break, we have a, a midwinter break and a spring break. Okay. So three different uh, five day camps that parents can sign their their kids up for one day or for five days, and they'll they'll have a sort of a sample of camp. Okay. Um, during that week. And we also have um, a program called Thursday Night Social Group, okay. which was started back in the very early 70s, uh, back when there was a JCC in Detroit, actually. Okay. Um, that program is for 16 and above. So anybody that age with special needs, we have programming twice a month where we'll do activities at the JCC and we'll also go off-site, um, you know, out to dinner. We'll go to Coney Island. Nice. We'll go bowling. Um, we're going to be going to Lucky Strike in the and next few weeks. So, so a this lot is of primarily to social and to get it is familiarization with the different environments because I, listen I don't know much about autism I would just mm -hmm. be very direct um, I just know that some stimulus and things like that can affect people differently so as part of this um, environmental um, familiarization or comfort in the, in, in the outside environment it is um, okay. partially a lot of our participants in Thursday night social group are living in group homes. Okay. So they don't have as many opportunities to socialize outside of their residence. Okay. So this is a great opportunity for them to get out and see familiar faces from our program. Sure. And it also provides the opportunity when we go out to restaurants, for example, how do you order food okay. based on how much money you brought with you or how much should you tip? Okay. Um, and what is appropriate socialization and social interactions when you're out in certain environments. Okay. So we definitely facilitate that, and we have several volunteers and staff that go with us on these trips to help make sure everybody has a great time. So essentially, it's life skills you're helping to, to, to build in, in people, um, which is wonderful. I think that that's, you know, in, in the old days, uh, people didn't understand what was going on in the world and didn't know how to help people. Um, especially with autism, they, they didn't understand, um, you know, working in the police environment, you know, sometimes we come across people with special needs and um, we don't always know how or what's going on. So I think that getting the information out to the, the population through um, formats like this or through your website, um, word of mouth, all that's wonderful. And so are, do you have any relationship with um, any other uh, groups in the township that you work with? Um, in terms of, I know there's uh, there's a school at the JCC. Do you work with them at all? Um, any other groups in the community? There's a ton of different organizations okay. that the JCC works with. Uh, we also partner with a lot of different companies uh, that we go on field trips, for example. So we have several locations that we'll go to and we'll work with. Um, but the you know the high school they have a lot of great programming um, for high, for their high school students. Okay. Um, so a lot of our programming really has to do with outside locations and how can we use those locations to really accomplish the goals that we're setting for the campers. That's great. And as far as the uh, the age range, I want to just reiterate this. We talked about the 16 and up. Um, is that for the camps as well? Are the camps? What's the age beginning age for the six, the camps? So there's another program that starts as young as two and a half, okay. and that's in our child development center, which is amazing. Okay. So they'll provide a one-on-one -on -one counselor to be with that preschooler or the two and a half year old during their daily schedule. Okay, great. We also have a great inclusion program called Kids All Together, which serves kids from kindergarten through ninth grade. Okay. So they'll have an inclusion counselor to stay with them throughout the day and throughout the session to make sure that they're integrated uh, appropriately and they're being um, encouraged and motivated to participate in all the activities that their neurotypical campers are taking part in. Um, our other two programs are, um, like we said, the 16 to 26 year old is the vocational program. Okay. We do have a third program um, in that age group for uh, the socialization aspect. So okay. uh, that's called SNAP, uh, Special Needs Alti Special Needs Adventure Program. Okay. That program goes on four field trips a week, and then one day everybody's on campus together. Okay. So the main goal of that program is socialization, okay. um, similar to the Thursday night social group, but this is the, the summer program for okay. that. Um, one of the things I really like to highlight is that our programs go up to 26 years old, okay. which is, we're the only state in the country that provides programming up to that age. Okay. So it's really an essential 
service and, and programming that we provide because there's not a lot that's available for young adults after the age of 21. Okay. So it's really imperative that we, that we have this kind of programming. Yeah, I think it's great because, I mean, there's always that need, right? Because once, you know, what do people do after a certain age? I think that it's, it's it, like you said, imperative that there is opportunity because people still need help, right? I mean, um, there's always going to be that transition period from, um, you know, what we would think of as a minor, um, and we can say 21 in this in this conversation, um, to 26, which is you know substantially older. And there's, but there's a lot to be learn to learn in that in that time frame. Um, so as a group, um, how long has the JCC had a special need? Is there a, is it, there been special needs for a long time through the JCC? Yeah, you know the the CAT program has been around since 1995. Okay. But like we said earlier, the the Thursday night social group has been around since I want to say 72 or 73. So okay. it's a very old program sure. and it's one that is again very needed okay. um, for this this age group and the young adults program was started about 13 or so years ago. So okay. it's really um, expanded and become a fantastic program since That's then. great. It's very um Makes your heart feel good that you know that, that people like yourselves are out there helping others. Is there anything that you want to get out to the information or out to the community? Um, any information that we haven't talked about that you feel is necessary to get out there? Um, um, I think it's really important to recognize that it's okay to feel uncomfortable and to feel um, inexperienced when it comes to this population because okay. it, anybody would feel uncomfortable in, a, in an unfamiliar situation. Sure. But I think the really important thing is to feel comfortable to ask the questions okay. and to get yourself more exposed because once you have that repetitive exposure, comfort just completely goes through the roof. Yeah, I think that's a wonderful message to get out there because you know, if you're not familiar with the population, then you may feel uncomfortable, right? We want, we want to change that. I think knowledge is power, right? Um, so I just want to uh, recommend that the, the viewers uh, reach out to you and to the website um, if they want to donate or want more information. Um, I think that that's a wonderful resource. And um, the website, one more time, could you tell us what that is? Our JCC site okay. is jccdet.org. Okay. Oh, yep. And then go to the special needs um, Correct. Tab or link. Yep, there's okay, a whole great. page for special needs. We're going to take a quick break and we'll get back to some more information. We're going to take a short break and return with more West Bloomfield 911. The West Bloomfield Police Foundation raises money to help those who protect and serve the community. Whether it's emotional or financial support, the foundation provides a helping hand to officers, their families, and those in the community. For more information on the West Bloomfield Police Foundation, contact Kurt Lawson at 248-975-8900 or visit wbpolicefoundation.org. Hello, I'm Lisa Brown, Oakland County Clerk, Register of Deeds. You know to check your credit report, but when's the last time you check the title to your property? Most likely your home is your biggest financial investment and deed fraud is on the rise across the whole country. Oakland County is no exception. That's why I worked with Xerox and Google to create our property records notification system. Property records notification alerts property owners about potentially fraudulent activity, such as forged deeds and bogus liens. This free service, which is the first of its kind in the United States, makes it possible to receive up-to-date information about a property, making it much more difficult for fraudsters to go undetected. To sign up for our free notification system, please visit ocmideeds.com. Welcome back to West Bloomfield 911. I'm Tim Shepard, your host. I'm here with Stephanie Zoltowski, the Director of Special Needs at the JCC. And Stephanie, again, thanks for coming out and speaking with me Thank about you. all this information. It's wonderful. Um, I know that when we last left the segment, we were talking about communication. Um, I know communication is imperative, and everyone communicates in different ways, uh, body language, verbally. Can you tell me, give me some insight into uh, communication with people who may have special needs? Absolutely. So just like neurotypical people, um, anybody with special needs 
will be uncomfortable or nervous in situations they're unfamiliar with. So it's really important to understand that people with special needs may take a little bit more time to process the information that they're hearing. Okay. Um, we may see a lot of um, sensory issues where if a noise is too loud, they may become upset or they cover their eyes or ears, and a lot of times people interpret that as them not being listened to. Okay. Um, so it's really important to just realize that we need to be more patient okay. and that they need some personal space so they're feeling comfortable, and um, really that we're giving short sentences, short instructions to them without using like idioms. Okay. Um, it's really important to not speak abstractly because a lot of people with special needs um, will not understand something if we say, for example, take a chill pill. They won't understand that. Okay. So we have to use sentences like, please calm down okay. or let's take a seat. So it, just slowing things down, giving some personal space and really understanding that they do communicate differently than we do, I think okay. is really important. I agree because working in law enforcement specifically, um, we come across people that may have special needs and if we're not educated on how to communicate, it could turn to a, a, a volatile situation easily, especially with an adult. I mean, even with children, right? I'm talking about uh, not elementary school age but I mean even at that age I think that if if they're scared of people are scared in general how they react can vary right so what I mean by that is say the fire alarms go off at a, a school or a building um, and so if someone those kind of uh, stimulus can probably change how they react, right? Am I correct absolutely. in that? Absolutely, absolutely. Which is why at camp this summer we're really amping up um, the activities for safety and awareness. Uh, we'll be practicing fire drills and we'll be coming to the police department and the fire department to get more familiar with what a uniformed officer looks like oh, and what wonderful. kind of things okay. they might have to talk to an officer about. Um, okay. Really, again, building that comfort and repetition so if they get put into a situation they know how to react and they're comfortable doing it. And that's important for us and I say us in law enforcement as well so we can be understanding of how this or what stress they're under because um, when we show up if there's an emergency of course there's typically going to be lights and sirens and now that may affect someone differently um, depending on what your special need is right? Right. Am I, am I right with right. that? Right I mean it's a very bilateral uh, experience, the way that we react and the way that we speak is going to influence their reaction. So it's really okay. important to just remember to take that step back and to calm down a little bit before we start that communication, even if it is an emergency situation. Well, you know, speaking on behalf of the police department, um, I know that our command staff is very interested in working and collaborating with you and your team about um, educating us because we want to be able to be a uh, comforting factor in these situations because we come across situations, we don't know who, who is who. We don't know who has uh, right. special needs, who, who, who is angry and upset because they're just angry and upset. Right. Um, so I think that um, we're definitely interested in collaborating and working with you and your staff on becoming um, educated on how to handle these situations. Um, I know that uh, as far as the JCC, so I just want to get make sure I get this out correctly. The camps, one more time, are in the summer, and give me the dates, not specifically, but are they in June, are they in July? We start mid-June, okay. and we go until mid-August. Okay, so it's primarily the whole summer. It's all summer long, okay. right. Is there anything else that you want to get out about what's going on with the JCC and, and, and as being director of, uh, of special needs? Um, um, I I think our, our program is really growing, and I think partially because the stigma associated with having a special need, I, I believe that stigma is slowly decreasing, yeah. and it's really opening the door for a lot of parents because they're feeling more comfortable to reach out for their, you know, the resources that their children may need. Sure. Um, so I think it's really important for people to know that we're here. We're very receptive to the programs um, that we're that we're running during the summer and year round and we're always looking to improve and expand and make sure that the kids in our community are safe and they're having a great time. Well that's great. Stephanie, thank you very much for coming out today and sharing all this information and again on behalf of the police department we look forward to working closely with you and becoming educated ourselves on how we can better serve our community as well. Thank you. I'd like to thank you for joining us for this episode of West Bloomfield 911. You can keep up with the police department by liking us on Facebook, 
following us on Twitter and Instagram. You can also sign up for Nixle.com and CrimeMapping.com for the most up-to-date information from the police department. Thank you for watching. Take care.